Testing one, two, one, two. Hopefully I'm live. I'm here trying to do this um, live streaming thing. So for those that have uh, subscribed to my channel, they know that I normally post uh, uh, pre-recorded videos on, on the markets, you know, depending on what I'm into. Lately has been the uranium sector. And uh, things just to catch my attention. I just figure I want to share it out with uh, some traders out there. Let me see if these levels are. One, two, testing. One, two. One, two, one, two. So this is kind of a test slash uh, going over the Aussie. One, two. Hopefully it's not clipping. Uh, but pretty much to get my ears wet be behind uh, streaming, live streaming. Um, just trying to mess around with this. And uh, hopefully it sounds good. I'm just looking at some settings here. Make sure it's cool. So that's working. Okay, good. So I got some things up here. Um... All right, so I put a video out called Trading Tips, and one of them was using this uh, software called uh, TradingView for folks that trying to look for trades, trying to see what's what's happening, you know. And I'm focusing on the forex um, signal wise. Like I've gotten you know emails here and there's like, hey, you know, I don't, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get a good trade and I can't do all those calculations and analysis and stuff like that you guys, you know, in the GAN community do. So I figured, you know, I said, well, you know, why don't you just check out this uh, site? So I said, I'll make a video so you could kind of, you know, check it out and then you could take it from there. You could use your own system, your own strategy, your own plans. But it's a good, <clears throat> it's a good starting point. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, in TradingView, they got they got these uh, um, uh, screener, and as for stocks, you could you know if you're into stocks, you could you could screen the stocks, you could screen forex signal, and you could screen cryptocurrency. So it has whatever flavor you. It doesn't have futures, but that's fine. You know, a lot of tr people don't trade futures. Um, you got crypto, and you got forex, and you got stocks. So if you go to Forex Signal and you're into trend following, I like trend following. And then oscillators is all signals, ADX, uh, awesome oscillator, ATR, you know, community channel index, all this, performance uh, per week, per month, uh, performance three months, six months, year to date, volatility. And it gives you all these numbers. Um, this one doesn't really give you anything. It just gives you, well, it gives you all this uh, and volatility. But it doesn't tell you like, hey, sell or short. You just got to look at the numbers. And uh, just by looking at the Australian euro and British pound, if you don't know anything, it's all red. That doesn't look good to me. And the volatility, it won't give you a color. It just tells you that the higher the number is, the more crazy the market is. Just look at it that way. So this is uh, two... Uh, 2.01 percent. It's pretty. It's pretty moving. Uh, you know, 0.52 percent. Uh, the volatility is not that strong, but this is this is pretty strong. So the volatility is high, and, uh, and then you got overview. So I was tell I was making the video to like show. Hey, so look, let's look at. Uh, trend and then you got your time frames you can pick whatever major I got the majors I don't really and then you can look at kind of like criteria rising pairs falling pairs all-time highs all-time lows you could break it down 52 weeks high 52 weeks low new months um, looks like we got uh, a listener in the chat Aaron what's up and then you got all this volatility, you got broken down. You could use falling pairs, click on that, and it shows you all the ones with strong signals. Well, you can leave it in general, uh, unless you're kind of looking to short. It's like, I want to look for something to short. If you got the short style, if you're bearish, 
They don't show you all the ones that are falling and all the ones that are rising. But let's leave it in general so you can kind of see, you know, the back and forth. And then you got here the, the day, the week, and the month. Uh, in order for the trend following, you know, unless you're a scalper, you look at the four hour, an hour, 15, five, and one minute. But for, for trending, uh, you know, for, for swing trades and bigger, uh, you look at these three, daily, weekly, and monthly. So let's look at the day. Let's look at the daily. So we got a strong sell on the Australian dollar. That's the one we're going to be looking at today. The euro, uh, the British pound, the New Zealand dollar. Uh, you look at the uh, weekly. You got a strong sell on the Aussie, the pound, and the Kiwi. You look at the monthly. You got a strong sell on the Aussie, the pound, and the Kiwi. And that's on the trend following. So right there, you know, looking at this system, you're like, all right, maybe there could be something there on the selling side on uh, one of these three. And then you pick one, uh, or you can look at all three and decide which one you think is best. You can look at the oscillators. The oscillators just say either sell or buy. Uh, then I'm going to tell you like a strong buy or strong sell. And you could do the same thing there. Uh, performance, like I said, you can look at the volatility and you can see the weak uh, percentage changes. And then overview, it'll, sell, it'll tell you uh, sell or buy. And on the monthly, all these three are or four are sell. On the daily, uh, this one's a strong sell, you know, overall performance. And on the weekly, the Aussie. So the Aussie pretty much is like falling apart. So you have a system that's telling you or signal on trading view, sell the Aussie. All right. So let's look at the Aussie. Let's close this down. So uh, I use Thinkorswim and uh, I like it. I'm thinking about getting another platform. I want to get into uh, automated trading using the robots uh, programming that. So that's something I'm looking forward to this year. I'm doing my research, trying to figure out which one, uh, to pick and then dive in and get into, uh, you know, set up a system where the robots are trading for me and give them rules and then see how it does back test it. And then just give it the green light and go do your thing. Uh, Cause sometimes I can't be, you know, I can set alerts here and there and, then look at the charts and decide if I'm going to short it or go long. But with the robots on, you know, behind working with you, it's, 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 it's the future. It's pretty much the future. Instead of being in front of the computer all day, you could go out and let the computer, you know, do some trades for you with no emotions. So let's look at the Yazi. This is, um, my screen is broken up in different time frames. Uh, I like to look at the uh, what I call the big picture. I want to see everything. So this is the big one right here. This is uh, monthly, and this is maxed out. Uh, this is uh, weekly, uh, daily, 12-hour, 4-hour, 1-hour, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 5 minutes, and 1 minute. So... Just looking at this chart, you can see that, and uh, and I keep it simple. Uh, can if you look at uh, my video tip uh, trading tips number one, you can see the explanation of, of why what the system is. It's pretty basic. Is uh, uh, like auto fib levels, uh, percentage levels, a moving average, which is a fifty. Uh, color candles. So when they're trending lower, they uh, turn red. And I'm using the Hekanashi uh, candle style, so I can see what's going on there. So let's look at let's look at the big picture monthly. Let's, let's close all this out. And this is the Aussie. Made a high here, low here, pretty easy. This is auto fib, so it it, it just picks up the uh, swings and lays all these num this out. So you can see that right here, uh, it's been a uh, it's been chopping around the 50, trying trying to stay above it. And mind you, this is monthly candles, and it's trying, 
and it pierces it and it can't and it's just a chopness and now we have a sell signal and it's below the moving average so that's interesting right there uh, this candle was uh, bullish uh, is this the Hekanashi? I believe so maybe I switched it back to candle oh this is candle so the Hekanashi you see right there is just telling me it's red uh, this is bullish in the Hekanashi, but in the uh, downside, it's red. And the color coding just turned turn red right here. So it's a sell signal on the monthly with two monthly candles negative below the moving average. I like to see that. It's the same pattern like we have here. But, you know, sometimes it goes up. Uh, it depends where you're at. As you can see, that has been chopping around here, and it's just sloping over. Uh, same thing here. This is actually nicer, uh, an opportunity to short here when this signal kicked in. Uh, but we got a sell signal on the monthly below the moving average, and then you go to the weekly. Uh, and it's sold off here. It's fine. It's just dancing around this 50, which is that 74, uh, what is it, 80. And kissed up there and failed, and now it's here on the weekly below the moving average with a sell signal that kicked in on February the 5th. And then uh, on the daily, uh, you know, there's more swings play here. You can see that it just goes up, down, but it's making a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Lower high, and now the question is, is it going to make another lower low? That's the big question. We got a sell signal on the daily with the candles negative, red. Uh, what's the price? 7504. Somewhere around here. Trying to hold this FIB level. So, first thing I would do to decide uh, if I want to, you know, I mean, obviously you can see that it's, it's bearish, it's selling. Uh, I want to do my GAN grid. So to do the GAN grid, you got to go into the chart by itself. I got to create a drawing set because then you'll, you'll understand why it messes everything up. Aussie USD GAN grid M for month uh, GAN grid so you can look up my video channel you can see GAN grid how I create it but in order to and these are the kind of the steps I take in order to see what you know besides looking at the uh, moving averages and the indicators I had uh, where where does the uh, Aussie sit? Let's go from here to the top. Now my computer's stuck. Come on. Come on. Now it's stuck. Well, time for a coffee drink here. Must have a lot of stuff running in this thing. Um, might have to close some things out. So now it's stuck. Well, in the meantime, let me see. I'm testing this live stream. So this is a good thing. It's showing me what... This thing is capable of doing what what is maybe not capable of doing. Say hello. So it catches up. Maybe I need to restart. I don't know. Don't you hate that when it happens? <laughs> Hey, but that's what testing is all about.
it's uh it's stuck in the loop it's stuck in the loop well now it's really getting ugly I might have to get out and restart it so please forgive me give me some time maybe I just got too much stuff maybe I need a new computer I don't know let's see let's close that out just when I was about to get into the good stuff and process Okay, there we go. We just got out. I'm going to log in again. Um, so, going back to the... Hopefully it opens up again. Going back to where we're at, the, the trading view was selling us everything is a strong sell. So now what you want to do is you do a gang grid, and once I'm up again, if I could ever get up, um, we do the GAN grid and then you can see the angles and you can see, you know, uh, in geometry where the Aussie is sitting at. Um, cause you could, be, it could be selling, a, it could be saying a strong sell and the Aussie is, it could be like at right at support. And when you start piling on, you know, you want to trade with the probability of it selling and not at, you know, massive support. Okay, so it's uploading here. Updating. Video output low. So it says YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming as such. Viewers will experience buffering. So that's not good if I'm going to start streaming. I got to figure out why it's happening. And mind you, I'm trying this. I normally do videos, record it, and then post it. It's smooth and easy. No issues. Um, trying to do this live stream. Trying to learn it a little bit. Uh, it's probably causing, you know, putting a strain maybe on my computer. I don't know. I don't really have much... Let's close this. Okay. Mm, don't save. Well, I had an Excel sheet open, but that shouldn't be much. Okay, so now I'm going to log in. Hello, guy from France. Hello, Tom. How you doing? I'm here uh, testing out this uh, live streaming. I really, I, I really don't do live streaming at all. So I'm trying to see if this system is capable of doing it. And at the same token, I figure I'd probably just go over something that I'm, I'm watching and showing. You know, some things that I use and some things I do, uh, and then just kind of test this all around. Uh, and this kind of really much caters for Aussie traders, uh, for the Australian traders, because uh, I just picked that one just because of the trading view says that it's a strong selling signal. So I wanted to show the viewers, you know, some ideas and tips on, on an, an, anal an analysis on something uh, that you may want to, you know, consider. It's very slow. Wow. Very, very slow. Okay, I'm up. And now I'll look at the video. I'm probably not going to post it live yet. I'm going to see how bad it is and decide if I should continue doing it live or just, you know, 
just stick to what I normally do, which is just post videos and, and just do it that way. But I'm just trying to give this give this a shot. He says, how are you? I'm an Aussie trader. Yes, for for me, call on Aussie. So what do you think, Tom? You, you think it's a sell? I, I, I'm just doing the video, and I was showing, you know, if you were watching or not. Um, on TradingView, there's a thing called Forex Signal Finder. And I was just looking at all their signals. And it says that Aussie is a strong sell using their trade trend following. Uh, and I'm using the weekly, daily, and the monthly. It was all uh, pretty much strong sell. And some other ones, the pound. Uh, and I think I think the New Zealand dollar was, was, was in there too. Let's see, strong sell. Yeah, New Zealand, pound, and the Australian dollar. So... If you wanted to like get a signal, you could be like, okay, what's going on? And then you, they're saying that the uh, Canadian dollar is a strong buy, the Swiss franc, and the uh, Japanese yen. So this could be like a guiding point to see what what the models are saying. And then from there, you branch out, and then you look at the chart. And that's where I was at, but then things were just kind of, I the thing, my, my software froze, so... If you could chat what your bias is, what you think, you know, your analysis. I just wanted to just kind of test the system and just see how it works. So so let's go to where I was at, and hopefully it doesn't freeze this time. Mm. Okay, Aussie. So here we at. Here we are. Let's go to the monthly max. I'm going to have to open this up a little more. Uh, first, I need to create. Um, oh, okay. I get. I created the GAN grid. All right. So, I start out with the big month and the most data I could. Get. So go as far as you can. I have mine. Uh, I believe mine is maxed. Or well, if it's not, I'll check it. Twenty years. However far you go back, the better. So this is what I got. I'm going. The low was in. Uh, 2001 and the high was in 2011 then I gotta give me some space in the front because um, I need I need to do something so I'm gonna give myself 300 bars of space in the front good so the first thing I do I uh, get and you can look up on my channel my YouTube channel the GAN grid the GAN grid I call it um, you get your Fibonacci, or well, it's called here Fibonacci, but mine is different. Mine is in percentages, but it's pretty much all, almost the same thing. Um, yeah. So you can see that that's the 50, that's the 37.5, and that's the 62.5% level. 75, 25. Easy. 25. 37.5, 50%, 62.5, and the 75% level, and then the top. And the next thing I do is I get the Fibonacci time series, and I get that low, and I push out, and I try to lock in. I'll show you right now. I'm not, I'm not just not putting it anywhere. I'm kind of, I'm trying to get this blue one. Like this one right here across is the 25%. I'm trying to get the 25% to line up with the top. So what this is, is the first impulse wave. And this is from the big picture. So once I go in there, you know, and you can see that it, it, I don't really get it exactly. So I got to double click on it. Uh, but the key is, is to get it, you know, close enough. So maybe I should just go maybe three, three, four months or two more months out and look and lock it pretty close. It doesn't have to be exactly, you don't have to go, you know, OCD and go crazy, but just get it close to the 25%. And then you want to look, make sure you got the low down here. Yeah, so we're good. How's it sound out there, Tom? I'm uh, I'm testing this live stream, so I just I'm curious. I don't know if it's buffering. This thing says it is. Uh, it might be buffering here and there, so I don't know how bad it is. But I guess I'll watch it. You know, 
before it posts. So you got your 25%. So pretty much what it is, and this I got from MSJ, Michael J, My Michael S. Jenkins. Oops. You want to get, got to get grip on it. You want to get the first impulse wave. And that's the first impulse wave. So right there, that will be your 25 percent level and then from there everything shoots out so the first thing i want to do is i want to get the medium zone right here and right there so you do a, a you do an angle from the low and you shoot it across and it won't it doesn't have to be exact but pretty much close you want to get it close enough and you close it you can see right there and this bar is the 45 within the 25 percent uh first wave impulse so right there you click this uh you're not really concerned about the dates that's you get i mean you don't have to worry about that this software does it but i could just show um uh, uh never and we need to put this so you could get the idea and change it like this. Okay, so you see, this is the 45 within the first impulse wave. You can see how the Aussie is respecting it. And you could shoot one across going this way. Uh, so you do the same thing from here. And you shoot it down here. And this is real easy. This is something anybody could do. It just takes time to do it. But once you, you, you do a couple of times. Um, try to get it close. There you go. Never. You turn, turn it green. And you do a little dash. Right here so this is the medium point this is the equilibrium of this swing of this chart of the Aussie and you can see that the Aussie has been respecting this angle it didn't kiss it there uh, it chopped it a lot around here uh, it's going kind of back and forth on the 50% level of, of the month monthly chart and it kissed it again right there now let's zoom in. If you ask me, I wouldn't short the Aussie into this angle. I will wait for the Aussie to go below the angle on the monthly, somehow find support somewhere, shoot up, retest it, then short the Aussie. It might, it might take two months, or it may not test it at all, but the probabilities of your success is greater if you're below the 45 angle. It's, it's, it's going to be a, a play that you just have to watch. That will be the first thing I'll, I'll think of looking at this. And if it fails the 45 angle, then this will be your target, that 37.5, which is a 71.49. Um, or, you know, you could put pivots. You can see that there was support there, support there. Uh, that could be also a, a target you could watch. You know, that it comes down this month, or June 14th. Yeah, so we got a while ago, you know. Maybe find support. Then in July, test it and see what happens. Because look, look what happened there. Look what's, look what's going on here. Look at the pass and look at the angle. A lot of bear traps going on here. A lot of bear traps. A lot of bear traps here, here, here. And maybe a lot, a lot of people don't know this angle, but, you know, if they don't even know this angle, they don't have to know this angle. They don't have to know the gain grid. They could just, you know, put a channel right here. 
same thing. To save them all the hard work of, you know, building the GAN grid. Uh, but it's the same thing. So they're holding it here, and that was what's, you know, strong support for the Aussie. So right now, even though the trading view says it's a strong sell, um, especially maybe this month has been saying that, um, I'd be cautious if it goes down there. Um, then you could go in in the daily and uh, from the monthly chart, and you can see that it's all still holding there. Look at that. On the daily, look what happened. It kissed it and bounced. 74, 118. The good thing about the GAN grid is that, and I got this, I get this from a lot of traders. Oh, your charts are not scale. They're not going to work. That's true. When your, when your charts are not scale, uh, nothing, you know, uh, the angles won't work. You think it's going to work and it's not going to work. It's not going to be support. But when you lock it in into a wave, what, imp what, what Michael S. Jenkins calls the first impulse wave, which is this, and this is from the big picture, you can see that things are getting respected. And when you see that, that gives you more confidence in what the Aussie is dancing to. And the Aussie is dancing to this, this angle. Things to watch in the future is when it, the Aussie gets to this point, the fluctuation point. Uh, it could be the kill zone or it could be the, the moment of glory where the Aussie could really shoot up. Uh, but this is going to be a, a key area within these two swings. And, you know, this is the data I got. The more data you have, the better. But so far, within this swing, this is the key point you want to keep an eye on. Uh, but it doesn't stop there. You know, that's just the main crosses, the 45 angles. Uh, you then do, um, you know, the, the uh, 25, which is there. You do the 50, which is there. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to kind of go quick uh, and... To just kind of see real quick i'm gonna dupe this one just say hover I, I i make this one blue so you kind of want to give it a color and just kind of leave it like that um and then you duplicate it and this you know actually this one's off this is not picking the low from the aussie there we go and you put it at the 50 percent. you could do it there i don't really do it there i normally use the bigger ones the 25 the 50 the 75, and then the 45, which is the one by one. And then work my way down here to 75, the 50, uh, the 25, and then that's it. So it's going to take a while before the Aussie kisses the 25 is going to go lower. It's already at the 50 here. You can see that's far away from it. Um, you got the 75. There's nothing there. Uh, the one by one, that's where the Aussie's at, you know, within price and time. And then you got the 75. Let's leave it at the 75 and see. Um, take this hover. Sure, should never. Okay. And you see right here, um, it's almost kissing the angle up on the uh, above. Uh, besides the you know having a tr tough time with the 50%, uh, almost kissing it. Not not bad. Uh, finding kind of support here. Um, and then you want to dupe it. When I mean dupe it, I mean duplicate it. You could do the, but this is all past data. So you could just mess around with it and see it and see what, what the Aussie did in the past. It, besides finding support here, it found support on the angle and the timing when it came down. Popped up, failed the 75, uh, pierced the 62.5%, uh, came crashing down, was chopping back and forth between the 50 and the uh uh the uh, two by one so you got the uh four by one three by one two by one one by one and then this is the one by one i mean the one by two one by three and then the one by four so you create all that and then you could do that on this side and let's let's see what we got on this side So you, you just not, and also you're just not putting lines anywhere. It, it, this is more more geometry than anything. 
obviously you know that's the one the uh, one by one so this is the uh, 45 going down um you could do this but this is all past uh the 50 uh nothing really there affecting the aussie when you go to the 75 in time now it's interesting now let's leave that let's kind of lock it in really snug let's change this color uh never I should put a default on that yeah, you could do a default and save it so let's see if this angle has any action Eh, there nothing really uh it's kind of well found resistance there chopping around aussie's here so this is this is where, where, where the Aussie's at within this 45 in here. And you know what? If you want to play the scalp uh, range, yeah, you could probably short it and, and have a target right here, 74.33. Uh, and if it closes below on a daily uh, and, and momentum kicks in, I don't, I don't see why not, not, not short it. You know, it could push lower and maybe find support here. At that pivot, which is this date, May uh, the uh, f the first, and then shoot up and test this angle like it's been doing like the last uh, couple of days. Look how deep it went in, and then it came back up, pushed lower. Buyers came in, pushing it. Buyers, 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 until one day the buyers won't be able to hold it, and then it's going to push lower. So that's for the Aussie. Uh, let's close this up and you know you continue doing that let's see so that's that angle uh, obviously that then you go over here and then you see there's nothing really there in regards to price action now uh, and that's on the monthly let's close that <clears throat> so I would do that on the uh, I mean you could do it on the monthly and leave it that way and go into your daily and those are your big picture angles that you'll be watching, the Aussie. Never got up there, so it never kissed it. But if it would have kissed it and you would have saw weakness, that would have been a nice short. Here it found support. So this is where you got to be careful. And then the next thing you would do, let's go back to the monthly. You will take, because then it's fractal. That's another thing. It's, it's becoming fractal. You start going in, into the chart. So now you take this swing high into this swing low. So let's call that, uh, create a new drawing set. And I'm going to call this Aussie USD GAN grid D for daily. Or you could use weekly. Let's do weekly. Let's do that. Now everything disappeared. Now you're starting fresh. Now we go into the weekly. Three weeks. Uh, let's go back more. Let's go 10 years. Let's max it out. Let's see what's going on. I don't want to miss anything. So 1079. That's what I want. Let's go then. Ah, 10 years. Okay, perfect. So then here, fractal-wise, you're taking the all-time high now, and you're working your way to this low. And you know in the back of your mind that there's a 45, an invisible 45, just traveling along because on the monthly grid, you, you know it's there. That's why you put it and you, you make it special so you can see what the Aussie's at and where is it at within price and time. And then the next thing you do is you get your percentage or your Fibonacci, whatever you want to do. It's fine. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a Nazi, you know, telling you you can't use fibs. You can use whatever you want. But you want to do is you just want to measure this chart. And the best way I know to measure the chart is, and that is in scale within uh, uh, what they call the first impulse wave, how MS, uh, Michael S. Jenkins says it is by doing this. Anything else 
especially in thick or swim, everything would be off. You know, I could use angles or whatever, and the Aussie would just fly right through it. It won't respect it. I've noticed, you know, my in my trading experience that this is the most effective way. So let's go here. Let's work our way up. Let's see. You go go here because you want to see. Uh, since it's been going up, you already got the low. You go from here. Let the thing got it. Okay. Actually, no, I got that wrong. Out of the right way. Remove. Because you want to do is it already came down, right? You the 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 Aussie just came down. So you want to see how strong is it going up and. The only way you could do it, see how strong is it going up, is by looking at the percentage levels going up. So you got the 25, which makes sense, 37.5, 50, 62, 75. And then from there, you go, and I'm going to need a lot of space because uh, I need to get the first impulse wave. So I need some, uh, I might need some bars here. Let's do the 500. Okay. And then you do the uh, Fibonacci time ratio. And this one doesn't really matter. Where, where you, well, you obviously, yeah, it does matter because you want to go from the top to the bottom. And then... Ah, I'm running out of space. I need more. Seven hundred. What I want to do is I want to line the twenty-five percent. So what's going on? Let me explain it. So what's going on here is that this is the first impulse wave coming down, and now it's retraced up fractal within a week. So what I want to get is that twenty-five percent to line here. That's the key. Once you get to 25% the line here, then you can see how all the angles are working. And, and then we, see, we test it out. You back test it. This is pretty much what it all is. It's all back testing. Uh, I haven't traded the Aussie in a while, so I'm just kind of showing you live what I would do. And I mean, there's more to it. This is just the, the starting point. There's more to this. There's statistics. There's analysis. There's finding out what the Aussie does now in June. There's like so much stuff you got to research and figure out, you know, so then you, when you place your trade, like Gan says, you, you've, you've exhausted all the mathematical reasoning and proof to say, okay, you know what, I'm sure to get here because of this. And then just feel confident, put your stop, this is how much I'm going to risk, and then just walk away. Go outside and get an ice cream. And then that's it. You don't have to worry about anything else. Just let the trade play itself. If you were wrong, it's going to stop you out. Then you go back and, and figure out what happened. But before you place a trade, you got to do your homework, you know? And even because, you know, the software uh, trading view is telling me it's a strong sell. It could be a strong sell and you're selling into support, which is a massive support. And we already know that there's a 45 going up here, which is huge from, 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 from the all-time high and the all-time low. But once it cracks it and fails it, and put, then that's even better to short it. Let's get the uh, time series. Let's hopefully we can get the 25 here, the 25%. How long am I? I'm 44 minutes. I'm going to try to see if I can wrap this up within an hour. I don't want to be too long here. I know I've got people who got stuff to do. So let's let's do this really quick. Right there, I'm kind of close. Uh, I want to get that 25. And if it's, you know, you don't got to go OCD. I, I get a little bit like that OCD. I get crazy. Um, but I want to get it close because then I want all the angles to kind of match up really good. So boom, I got it right in there. And you color code it. 25, 50, 75, 100. That's your grid. Um. Let's go in there, zoom in. Did it lock in? See, I'm, I'm off. 
Did I get the low? I did get the low, but I'm off. I'm a day late. So in this software, I got it. And I know there's software that does this automatically, which is cool. I just, the Thinkorswim just is not, it doesn't cater to GANists, you know, GAN traders. Um, like I said, I'm looking to uh, get into some other software. I mean, I got Timing Solutions, which is a killer. Um, there you go. I locked it in. So I got the, you know what, I'm, which is the low? Is this the low? Maybe I'm off. 68.26 and the low here's 68.27. So this was the low. So let's go back. Okay. I don't know. My thing is locking up. Yeah. Okay, good. So now we got it in. So now this is fractal on the weekly. So you see you got your first impulse wave. And then what you want to do is before you do anything, you want to lock in that 45. 45 angle. And it's easy. It's, it's all the way at the bottom of the corner of this grid. Go like that. And you know what? I'm going to make this as a default so you guys can see. It could just be easy. I don't have to waste time here. Uh... This would be green. Never Let's save as a default. Let's just do that. So right there is your 45. We got a while to go here. So in the future, for the Aussie, this is what you want to watch. Unless this gets violated. So if there's a low pushing and it goes down, then forget about this. It's not going to work for you Ganist. If the Aussie chops around and is, and is respecting that 45 and is pushing higher, and, you know, sorry for the choppy, ugly. <laughs> Let's do that again. Let's do it like the way it, the chart will really move, you know. And it's and you know that 45 from the monthly I told you it's there, and the Aussie's going back and forth. You know these are weeks going back and forth, and it's holding, and we get here like that. That's important. That's the kind of stuff Gan was looking at, because Gan would have been like, you know, we're at the 50 percent in time, within this swing high and this swing low. That's why Gan was always saying, look at the past and get all those important swings there's a reason mathematically why the aussie stopped there there's a reason mathematically why the aussie stopped there there's a more reason mathematically why the aussie stopped at that date in time and the time itself meaning one o'clock two o'clock three o'clock four o'clock in the actual day of the week that's what's gan analysis doing his analysis and writing all this down and that's why he was the baddest trader on the planet Earth. If I die and I'm going to meet someone, it's going to be Jesus, God, and then Gan. Because I want to sit down with that man and, and pick and, and, and just... And you know what? What's interesting, too, is a lot of the stuff he got from the Bible. He says a lot of revelation he got from the Bible. And you know what? I find myself right, reading the Bible and I see some patterns um, uh, I'm not going to go there, but there were some things I read it, but it's like numbers. It's, it's weird. It's numbers that he's, that, that I see in the Bible. It's like, man, three, you know, like he says, don't, don't trade on the, on, on, on the third day and this and that. And, and it's kind of weird. Um, and Nikola Tesla was kind of odd and weird. He believed in the number, you know, three and six and nine. He stayed in a hotel and it had to kind of be in, in one of the, you know, it had to add up to these numbers. Uh, 369, you can look that up on YouTube. Very fascinating. Uh, but there, there was always these patterns that these, these geniuses always found. Uh, and, it, and, and it was interesting. I know I, I digress. But anyway, if the, if the Aussie continues here, you want to look at that. And you know what's that date? Uh, doing the fractal, that's uh, six. That's, uh, well, it's way out there. 
uh, the month of June, uh, the 22nd of 2020. So that's a while back. You don't have to worry about that. Um, let's, uh, let's continue doing the uh, angle. Mm, I got 10 more minutes. I need it. I want to get to the daily and then call it a day and look how this video, um, let's change this. Cause I don't want you to think that that's a 45. Uh, it's pretty much an angle. Uh, let's leave it like that. Okay. So then this, you will take it from that high and you put it here. Uh, the 25, obviously there, the 50, look at that. You'd be amazed what you find when you just do like things like this. Um, what price action is doing. Now let's zoom in. Uh, like I said, 25, 50, 75. That's all I'm using. Nah. Nothing sec. Well, there was kind of sexy. Pierced it. But it can't stay above this angle, which is interesting on the weekly chart. Uh, let's go... Let's duplicate that and then you go to the 75 obviously there's nothing there and then you know you go like that um, you go down here and you do the same thing up oops just trying to save time you guys could do this on your own you got the software to do it you don't have to buy you know packages or whatever uh, unless you got some kind of GAN you know trading software that's really badass they probably have this kind of stuff automatically. Uh, well, this you couldn't figure it out because this low was in here. So none of this is going to be valid. Once this low is in here, you could do the 50. Nothing there. The 75 were way off. The 45 of this grid. Uh, it the prices hasn't reached up there yet. Uh, you could do the 50. And then that's interesting right there. From the 50. Let's look. zoom in. It's it, it finds you know you could be scalping areas right here you could just buy it uh, and just sell the top you know it's finding support there let's let's really zoom in support 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 cracking it just cracked it failed it. And, that, and this is the weekly chart. And then you just kind of, so that angle will be important this week. And you go to the, oops, you go to the 75% level. And we haven't gone down there. But look, look at the fascinating thing about geometry in the GAN grid. Look, it's finding support here. I almost kissed it. Definitely got it here. And I'm not even, you know, be, I'm just kind of laying them around, but you don't have to be precise, you know. You don't have to be OCD like me. I'm just laying them there, and you can see that it's finding support there. And and that's where we at within here. And then lastly, you want to do the uh, create, and you want to call it the Aussie, a chart or whatever you want to do, the uh, GAN grid. Uh, this was a weekly daily and the daily then will be from this swing low right here to this swing high so what are you doing you're working your way fractal you're working your way backward you're working your way backward you're working from the big picture to the medium picture of the of the swing and then you're working your way to this right here and let's just do that real quickly before, uh, let's see, one year. Actually, no, that's not, let's go here. Time frame, let's go five years. So, yeah, so this, this is it. This is what I just showed you on the weekly. This is it. So, all right, test time. What's the first impulse wave? Uh, the, don't look at none of this stuff right here. It's none of this stuff behind that line. It's from here on out. What's the first impulse wave? First impulse wave, starting from this low, looking the way right. What's the first impulse wave? The first impulse wave is the wave 
that keeps going and then has a big retrace. Easy. Hard to miss. Once you see that, this big ass drop right here, that was your first impulse wave right there. You start from there. That's your that's your 25% move. Real easy. Five minutes. Uh, time. Time is always ticking. Let's go here. Do it this way. First impulse wave. Came down, you know, chopped it around here. Then you do your ratio from here. And it might be sloppy. I just want to save time to kind of get the picture of it. 25% right there. And you, well, notice that it didn't really like stretch out. Obviously, yeah, because the impulse wave is shorter. Right there. You locked it in. I think I got it in good. You know what? I'm off maybe. See, that's the OCD kicking into me. Maybe this might be a month. I don't know. It went too much. Let's go back. See, now you're dealing with days, so it's like, oh, what the hell happened? I don't know what I just did. Well, let's just get it close enough just to save time. You guys, yeah, I went way far. Let's just get it right. You can see that it'll still, it'll still work. So, let's look. Let's open this up a little more. And this is where we at with the Aussie. Take this low. And you'll be like, wow, the, the box just stopped right here. That's fine. You got your 45. We're not even going to bother none of this because this is the past. Now what you want to do, what's going to forecast these swing pivot lows, if it all pans out, is these angles shooting out into the future. Where's my uh, angle? Before I do, I gotta take the uh, this off because it's gonna be snapping and it's gonna throw my angles off. Um, so now let's do it. So 75. And let's uh, change this color. That way you don't get confused with the 45s. And let's just keep it blue. And let's uh, duplicate that. Uh, so you remember the 25, you use the 50. And Duplicate that, use a 75. Pretty close, give or take, right there. So let's see how the Aussie acted with these angles on the first impulse wave. Uh, found support at the 50 from the first impulse wave. Shot up, couldn't stay above this angle, which is the speed. So another thing you want to look at is the speed. It's it's. They say that if you're below the 45 degree angle, you're bearish, even though you're going up. Because the speed, oh, not maybe bearish. I'll take that back. You're not getting the good Momo like it was before. Just put it that way. Anything going high here is really bullish. Anything kind of going out here is still bullish, but losing Momo. And you can see that the 45 stopped here. Uh, and they couldn't get above this angle, pierced this angle. You can see 
respected it, came down, found support on it. One, two, three, four days, found support, then shot up. It was kind of in by itself in space. Came back down, shot up, uh, came back down, found resistance. So that's a nice little pattern. When it comes down, that's what I was saying, the 45-degree angle on the monthly, when it goes back up and it fails it, look how, look how nice the price action is shooting down. And that's what I'm kind of like watching to see how it does that. Where am I here? And it almost kissed this angle, but, you know, didn't. It found support. And this is where we're at now. To look at the support that could be here, that 745.56, this angle, and then that big 45-degree angle, you know, that I showed you early in the video on the monthly. And then if you wanted to, you could duplicate this. Uh another technique you duplicate it and you move it across so what you're doing you're creating grids and then you can see time wise in the future look 50 percent is sold off came back failed well maybe a, a bull trap then shot down came here and then sold off at the end of the grid and this is kind of off uh, let's line this up better there goes my lcd again Boom. Sold off here, came back up. Look at that. Right on that date, 919. Nice spike up and boom. Came down. Nothing there. Found support here. Shot up with the angle. Failed early. The grid came. Popped up. Failed. Pushed. Resistance. Uh, this is a key level because that's your first impulse wave. So that's 78.35. If it can't stay above it, uh, it was a good short. And that's where we're at right now. And you could duplicate, duplicate it and keep moving, keep moving it uh, over. Because then you have timing now uh, uh, from the first impulse wave. Duplicate it and you move it over. You want to get it really, really close. So looking at the past, you can see that at the 50% level, it it sells off, but you know, and then it popped that buck up here. Here, the 50% is at 8, 817. So you got one, two, three grids um, in the future. So that's that, man. Um that's my thought on the uh, on the Aussie. Uh, looking at the big picture, and see the good thing about this chart is that then I could go into my daily grid, I could go into my weekly grid, and then I could go into my monthly grid. And this is that key level. It could be a buy. You know, it could be a buy, but you want to watch that. You want to watch that. And I don't know if I gave the date in the future for the, for the, I mean, that's way in the future. You probably don't have to worry about that. But this level, if it's going to come down this month, it would be somewhere around 74.25. If it's going to test it, uh, this, no, this is daily. Well, yeah, we need the daily. It's going to be 74.25. If we come all the way down, if you're short, I will uh, tighten stops. Or just lock it in there. Or take half, you know, whatever your, your game plan is. Take half, tighten stop, bring it lower, and uh, give it some space maybe to wiggle room and see what happens. If it, if it continues below here, just know that, you know, the, the bears, are not, I'm not going to let you, you know, enjoy this. They're going to test that and see what happens. And if it fails, that is your kill zone. That's where I probably where I could come in. Um, and maybe if you want to be safe, do the, 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 the three-day rule, three-day week. Um, there goes to the numbers. Three days. Wait for three days to close below this. Wait for three weeks to close below it. And then maybe get in if you want to be less risky. Uh, or just, just trade small. And uh, that's it. Hopefully you like this video. I'm going to watch it back and get something to eat. And if the uh, streaming is good, then um, 
I might do this in the future, but if it sucks, then, you know, I just probably need to upgrade and get a better computer or just kind of just do what I normally do and just post my videos. God bless and uh, good trading.